hi guys, Emma again. Welcome back to the spare room. This is part 11, gosh already, of this little dynamo build called Prince. We're getting a bit done. Last, last video we cast this little commutator and we're waiting for that to cure. It's getting pretty hard and if we have a look at this piece of stuff, there's not a lot of give in it now, whereas it's quite flexible after it first skewered. And it's cracking when you when you try and tear it. So another few days that'll be ready to drill and tap and stuff. So we'll put that aside. Next part really is the the brush holders. And I've drawn this up as just a a fancy looking piece. And sent the drawing through to a friend who's got a laser cutting business here on the Gold Coast. And she returned these today, which are just black acrylic. Which looks pretty neat. It's got a to size hole there and here and here it's got a four millimeter hole and that goes just a nice neat fit on that bearing and it'll have a screw here to fasten it in place hold it all together and some sort of contacts on the outside or I think and just a copper a brass brush on arms here. I've done quite a bit of research on this and a couple of books I have and looked through quite a lot of model engineer from turn of the century to about 1910 and found quite a lot on on dynamos and building dynamos and and that sort of thing is quite topical in model engineer about that time and found drawings and ideas from everything from basically a block of wood screwed on here with a brass strip screwed to it which probably works through to a bit of bent wire through to little nickel plated hand thumb screws and sliding adjustable brushes and and blocks and proper terminals and things. So somewhere in between is what we're going to make. As to mount on here, probably a 4mm spigot through here with a thread and a nut on the outside. And probably another nut with a thumb screw. Just to attach the wires. And a 3mm shaft back in here. And then some sort of block on here to touch so that we can adjust down various tightnesses onto the, the actual commutator so that's probably the simplest and easiest way to do that and be a nice contrast against the the black plastic there so we found some materials let's get in and make some bits so I figured the first job is a couple of M4 nuts and I've got some brass to make them they need a bit of a file up and a rain of tap through them again but that's a pretty quick and easy job. Next part is the screws that go through the plate. They're just brass. I run a thread up in, boot them and mark them and I'm going to part that off and turn it around and drill in for a piece of three mil brass and just solder that in afterwards and we should have fairly solid connections that use the least amount of material and the least amount of work. So next step they just turn and face to the same length with the tool set at the same same point and the collet 
that's what's great about collet work and and step pieces is that you can always get two pieces the same length. I'm using this spot drill. I've got some lower angle ones. I'm not a huge fan really. I might as well just use a drill. I've decided. Yeah, it's not the right one and it doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's what I've got. And it'll do the job. Now I'm just going to drill these in 1 8. Mind that back. Without disturbing anything, I'm going to drill the other one exactly the same depth. And that's those two little bits finished. Next thing is to clean up a bit of this, each end. Solder them in. Just low enough so they don't touch the magnet. And they'll be the carriers for the brushes. So that's what they look like. I've left enough room in there. These nuts are going to go up a bit more. But I've left a bit enough room in there for a couple of fibre washers. Not so much because they need it, but because they'll look cool. Next job, I guess, is probably a couple of little 3 8 by 3 8 square brass blocks with a couple of screws in them. One 8BA in there to lock it and one to hold the brush down. And that looks like it's probably going to work. So for the brush blocks, I need a bit of 10 mil square Allen and 10 mil square brass. I haven't got any, I had a bit of half inch, so I've just cut a bit off and I've set a couple of bits of tools still behind there to make it nice and parallel and done it up, based it off, easy quick job, took five minutes. And we've got a bit of square brass. So these blocks go on here. that way around and there's a screw in here to hold the brush on place another screw to hold it on the shaft so that's a pretty straightforward little job this hole wants to be a little bit off center so what I'm going to do is just set that up in the fore jaw face him off drill him and probably part the two bits off So there they are, it's very easy to put off jobs that you haven't got materials for or you're not properly prepared for or you think might be a little bit tricky, but they didn't take long at all. Two little blocks. I'm going to drill them just in here for 8BA screws, which I've got, brass. Put one in each side just to lock these in place. And down through the top, another 8BA screw just to hold the brush in place. So that's the next job, and I'll just set them up in the machine vise and send a puncher first, set them up in the machine vise and just drill them. A pretty quick and easy job, and tap them very carefully. After a bit of messing around, tapping these holes, this is what I've got. These two hold insert appropriate AVE slogan here about cameras not focusing. And I've got two screws that hold these blocks on the shafts, and I've got a screw on this end which is for the bottom brush and a screw on this end which is for the top brush and 
fiber washers hold them together, they need nuts on them, little knurled nuts. And that's looking pretty good. It's business like and not too cluttered and not too Heath Robertson ish. So they should be alright. We need some brass shim to go through here on each side. Just into the centre, probably with a little bit of a kick on this end. Um, we'll cut them next. And these are nicely inside the, the housing here, so they're not hanging out too much. Probably going to put a little tool maker's clamp or something on here, just to hold this in place while we while we test it and run it. But um, so far they're looking pretty good. I got the thickness gauge out. Now I've got a couple of bits of tin. This one, which has obviously been packing for something that came from TNT, probably not. But there's a bit of historic ephemera for those who follow Australian freight companies that are no more. Um, this is point. This is about twenty tower, which is about point five. And this is 30 tower, which is probably a bit thick. So I'm going to use this bit. We need to work out some dimensions of some sort. I guess they only want to be this wide, which is about 8 millimeters. And the hole needs to go in there so that's nicely back. Probably to stop it turning, a little fold on the end wouldn't hurt, but that might be a bit too fiddly. And they want nice corners on the end, so probably the best thing is to find a straight edge and scribe it, cut a piece off with the tin snips and flatten it out. So I've chucked this up, this armature, this commutator up. I'm going to face that end of it. It's got a bit of wobble in it that I don't like much. But I think it's probably just that that hasn't set particularly flat. Nice sharp tool. And that's really machining beautifully. Pleased with that. So a few little jobs on this. I've machined him to length and drilled to 1.8 holes and tap these 8BA um, for a couple of reasons. 8BA is 40 something degrees pitch angle which means it's ideal for, for thin sections. The main one really, the main reason probably really is that I had an 8BA tap I've got 2 mil tap too which is almost the same size but it's a little bit coarser thread and the other thing, of course, is that you can't really buy a 2mm brass screw, I don't think, I've ever seen. So, there are two little screws there to attach the wires to. I've just tapped this M3 and put a grub screw in here, a nice long one. It's not touching the copper, so there's no short. But it seems to be plenty strong enough to hold that, I think. And they should clear these screws clear here on this bush at the back. And it looks all pretty nice and neat. So that's ready to wind. This is pretty heavy. All up so far this weighs about 1.3 kilograms, which is no lightweight. And that's the arm and picture in and spinning boys and girls. That all looks pretty good. As a postscript I ended up putting two screws in here, one each side. So that should hold it pretty firmly and it gives them something to grip against on the other side and stops it wobbling like it was starting to distort a little bit. So that looks pretty good. 
It's a little bit of end float there, but that won't hurt. And now that's ready for winding. So that's the, the brass brushes made up. They're just a bit of tin and a little bit of a curl on the end so they don't catch. And they sit on those two screws, that one there and that one there. That looks pretty neat and tidy and ready to go. So that's that part finished and I'm going to call this video a wrap. I've done a fair bit today. And thanks for watching and more soon.